welcome back. Another day, another vlog. It's Friday edition, end of the another week. We've uh, survived another week in September or Techtember or I think it's Techtember they call it. It's uh, a little bit quieter today, not as big. The We did have the big Canon Vision launch. We're going to talk about that today. Um, we're going to talk about upcoming videos from me that are just about ready to go. So that's pretty cool. And a couple of other little things to talk about. So let's get straight into it. Now, first of all, if you haven't heard of Rode, um, Rode do microphones. They're Australian company, so I'm sort of pretty proud to use their product. It's good to obviously support your, your local industries wherever you are, whether you're in America, Europe or whatever. Supporting local keeps your sort of money, I guess, in there. And I think every country sort of strives to sort of do that. It's probably doesn't benefit trade as much, but it's sort of good to support your locals and it makes you, I guess, feel better as well. So Rhodes an Australian company, so I try to use their microphones as much as possible. Plus they make a bloody good product. So they're pretty well renowned. Um, there's a couple other really good ones like Sennheiser and stuff around, but I've never had any real dramas and I love their Rode Wireless Goes. Just makes it so easy being able to just move and swap and change stuff around. So it's always been good to me. So they've got their annual, they do an annual My Road Reel video contest. Uh, it's a pretty big deal, a million dollars in cash, plus a heap of prizes on top of that cash. If you win it, it's like four categories, I think, and there's also a judges uh, category as well. So basically, um, you've got to make a three minute video and a behind the scenes video, which I've done, and i um, Pretty, I think I've done a pretty good job. I am by no means a uh, Steven Spielberg or a uh, Stanley Kubrick. Um, I'd definitely be the first to admit that. I have come a long way though. I think last year I thought about doing it and I was really, really absolutely petrified about even putting my name forward and, and putting something up just because I just felt that it was just going to be a joke. So this year, I'd sort of, last 12 months, my ability to actually edit a video, Sorry, I'm not and there's Siri, Siri just jumping in on anything. Um, <laughs> go, go Apple Siri, just random calls. Um, so yeah, just randomly, I didn't want to get in there unless I was good enough, and I think in the last 12 months, I've progressed good enough to sort of put up a, a starting point to sort of see how I go and to see where I'm at. Um, I sort of had an idea I was gonna do like a behind the scenes of a video, but I'd misread the comp. So that was sort of stuffed that up. But that worked out to be, I think the last video we put up and that was the uh, big double falls walk. So it was just gonna be too much to fit into that three minutes. Three minutes is ridiculously hard to try and get a video to suit to try and tell a story in under three minutes, to cram it in, to get what you want in there, it's it's pretty tricky, actually. It's easy for me to make an hour video because I you don't have that those constraints. When you put those constraints onto it, uh, it's very tricky uh, to make a video, I have to admit. Um, those short film festivals, I think would be a lot harder than say, putting up an Oscar movie where you see the Shawshank Resemptions and stuff like that for three hours and all those ridiculously long movies. <clears throat> Even like uh, with most movies, trimming it down to an hour and a half, that story time, and, uh, and I'm sure they try to keep it down, be keep it people's attention spans sort of intact by the end of a movie. It, it's pretty darn tricky and I, all the hard work and I could only imagine as an editor for some of those big films how much footage goes on the editing floor because for the three minute video that I made, I would have probably spent about six hours recording and, and taping stuff. I had like 60, 70 gig worth of footage um, and it's all trimmed down to a little little file, a little MP4, MP4 file. So yeah, pretty proud of it. Um, I think it's a good, from where I started on YouTube and learning footage and uh, learning video and teaching it to myself, 
um, through basically YouTube and Google. Um, it's about the only way I've done it. I think I've come a long way, and this is sort of a bit of a just a yep, yeah, rightio. Let's see where we're at and go from there. So I'm pretty excited to chuck it in. I should be doing that over the weekend. I should have it all finished. I've got to do some. Uh, I've got both clips done now. I've got to do thumbnails and get everything uploaded, and then do the final entry in, and then we'll see how we go. It's, uh, October seventh, I think, is it'll be. That's the cutoff date, then the voting starts. So yeah, pretty excited, fingers crossed, see how we go. Uh, if you get to see the videos, definitely leave a comment. Um, yeah, give a bit of support, it'd be much appreciated. Very cool, so I'm looking forward to that. We're, we're nearly there, it's been a long couple of weeks, at least two weeks or probably six months of plan, three months of planning and uh, a lot of hard work to get to here, so I'm pretty excited to see how I go anyway, what feedback I get, that's probably more so what I'm after is what feedback, where I need to improve, and maybe some tips on how I can do it. So hopefully you get that from the judges. That'd be pretty cool. Rightio, uh, into the news. Canon Vision was last night. Uh, wasn't these launches? It was really, really strange. They, they promote massive big launches, and there's a couple of good things in it. But then the I went to go to the Canon Vision, which I'd signed up. I never got an email back from. Even though it's signed in and, and joined up the program so I could go in and do the event, you couldn't go into their 3D realm to go check out the stuff. Um, for some reason, that wasn't working. But uh, I watched, got to watch the event during my lunch, and um, it was pretty cool. That C70 is a good looking bit of camera. We're going to talk about that. Um, and there was a couple of other things that they basically released as well last night. So get straight in that C70. That's the big one of the show. Uh, the little miniature cinema range, the C50s due to come. It would they were originally from Canon Rumors. They were saying that <clears throat> C50 was supposed to come out and be released with the C70, but they were having some issues with the C50, so that's been pushed back. But this key, uh, C70 first RF mount cinema range lens. It's super super compact. The C50 is only going to be must only going to be a little bit bigger than a say an R5 because this thing ain't that big. It's it's a lot thicker than a, a DSLR and it's got a fan system to to cool the whole thing down. But uh, look, I think it's got a lot of good things. Uh, it's got for the, and it's basically all for video. So there's no photography stuff in this. It's a, purely a video camera, and it, I think it's going to do pretty darn well. Now it's got 13 assignable buttons, so you can reassign all the buttons on the sides and all that, so that's pretty cool. 10, e, 10 ND stops built in, so definitely a must for the videographer. Two XLR inputs, so that's for your stereo sound, for your, for your uh, microphones and, and stuff like that, so that was pretty cool. That's a pretty good deal for such a small thing. It's got that 4K Super 35 uh, dual gain output sensor from the C300, I believe. Um, 16 stops of dynamic range, so that's that's massive. Uh, that's really going to be able to get your highlights and your and your darks and be able to get get all that info back out of them. So that's pretty darn cool. 4K 120 with dual Pixo autofocus and audio, so that was pretty cool. Touch AF. Uh, dual SD cards, and that was a that was probably the one that I think out of all of them surprised me the most. Considering the R5 and the R had the CF Express cards to get all the data, and this is a cinema range, I would have thought that the cinema range would have sort of necessitated those bigger cards. Now I'm just wondering if Canon's, since they had that SD upgrade and announced that they were going to expand how the speeds and, and the storage of the SD cards, and they, they can basically do that. Then maybe they've gone, well, hang on, maybe we don't need to go to CF. If the SD cards are going to get better and bigger and faster, well, maybe we don't need the CF, CF Express. Um, and I think there was a lot of uh, negativ negativity when they announced the CF Express for the R5. So a little bit strange that, but it's got twin SD cards. Now you can... Beauty, one of the other good things about the two SD cards was the fact that you can record two different formats to each one to each disc. So you might be in say H.264 
uh, on this one and then your other card you can go to 10 bit or whatever on that one so that was pretty cool I thought um, very very strange setup but obviously it's a cinema camera you need to have those that um, how do you call it not adjustability ability just to uh, fine-tune it and get it exactly how you want so pretty darn cool now we'll do 180 frames per second in super 16 so you're gonna crop a little bit more but uh, I don't think they really do too much of that slow-mo with the cinema. You're going to get more of the moving around. It's going to be like a, an A camera for your, for your main cinema camera. It's your backup camera. Um, 1.1 kilos, so it's a fair bit of chunk on it. Uh, I would assume, that's, but that's not too bad. That, the 1DS I had, the, uh, that, like that's a solid, robust weather weather proof weather sealed just built like a brick shit house camera i reckon that'd have to be close to a kilo um so this thing here 1.1 kilo for its size i think it's pretty darn good they've done pretty well i'm not sure what they're using i'm assuming the frame must be a, a manganese or magnesium alloy of some description to be so light and to have that strength and also for heat purposes it's obviously by no means weatherproof. It's got a big fan grill on the side to get the dust out away from all the parts and blow stuff in, basically just like a cab uh, pressurizer system to, to keep it always clean. Uh, five and a half thousand US dollars. And that was the other thing. It's a lot cheaper than I think people were expecting. That's $7,900 Australian. So that's cheaper than a 1DX Mark III DSLR. So that'll give you a little bit of perspective on it. So you get a cinema grade camera that you can basically do a hell of a lot of high quality 4K footage with, um, and it's under 10 grand, like at least two, two, two and a half grand, probably if you got a deal, two and a half grand under that 10 grand mark. Uh, that's pretty good considering that one DSL, their top of the range DSLR is 10 grand. So pretty cool. Putting it in the same sort of territory as the R5 II, so if you don't need the 8K, and I don't think a lot of people really need the 8K, um, if you're looking for a video-centric type camera and you want something portable, well, I think the C50 and the C70 are going to be great options. It's going to be really interesting to see the difference between the C50, what that's going to have, or what that's going to not have compared to the C70. So like there's some great features in here and the similar price to the R5. Uh, I'd probably, if you if you really wanted a video, then you're probably better going towards this than the R5, I guess. It ain't going to be that much bigger at a kilo, so that's that's probably not too bad. Now, also, they released a 0.71x EF to RF ad mount adapter. Now, this mount adapter is fully weather sealed, uh, full metal construction, and it had another little neat feature on there that you could had built-in screws already in the in the camera and you could basically permanently mount that adapter on so instead of having to either constantly put it in and out in and off you could leave that mounted to your camera and then just have your old EF lens EF lens range or cine range and bolt it straight on so that was pretty cool a little bit of uh, good thinking there i think um, i think they've done they've really thought about this one uh, and it seems like it hasn't just been whacked together. It's a fully redesigned, total new type of system, and I think they've done a good job on that. And this little boost is going to do a really good job for your EFs and your other lenses to get them up to that quality. Now, as well as that, they also released a new one. It's probably not, not in the realms of us or even YouTube or anything, but a commercial uh, lens system. It's a three-point system, they call it. But I thought it was pretty interesting because they said they used it for the first time at the World Cup in the rugby last year in Japan. And it's basically a system where these super advanced cameras, uh, state of the art, and they put them everywhere around the field of this rugby game. And they show an example of a soccer game. And you have multiple cameras. They're all basically networked into one system. And... When they did it last year in Japan, it, was, it took a little, it took a couple of about three minutes, I think, 
all that data comes into the main hub, then they're able to put that together and give you basically a three-dimensional view of the action of the of the highlight a highlights package. So if you can imagine, if I'm running down the pitch of a soccer soccer ground, um, there'll be cameras on all all around you, all around the stadium, all focused on the pitch, all tracking the ball, um, all focused on that, and then. They've worked it out now as of this year that it's going to only take three seconds so to work this out. They can basically take live footage of me and they can pivot the image onto and then send that to the screen to, so you're watching. And if you've got a three-second delay and you can pivot the screen and see full 360 degrees around that player. So if they're going to do an overhead, they can go and check, they can go and check umpire's decisions because they can then do a 360 degrees around of the actual play, see where the line is, see where the ball is, see if he's, he's touched the ball with his hand. Well, then if the, you can't see it because his hand's behind his head, well, then they just go around to the end view this way. Just absolutely mind-blowing technology. Um, yeah, very, very cool, very scary, but I think uh, sports... Just, I could just imagine it'd be just super, super cool that live you'll be able to, on your TV, just move, change angles. So if you don't like the angle, so if someone's coming in on the AFL, they're going to kick a winning goal, but they're off on the sideline and they're going to kick and they've got a, the cameras on a bad angle, well, basically they can do change it so you could put yourself right behind the goals and you can watch him kick it or you can go right behind him and see exactly what angle he's going and see where he's running and see if he kicks it and if it's going to go in before. So normally you might get a bad angle and you don't know and you're sort of like, oh, is it going through? I don't know. Uh, well, now this with this technology, you basically be able to line everything up and, yeah, really, really cool technology. So I thought that was actually really super interesting to watch, even though fully commercial and probably like in the millions of dollars of uh, to set up and to run and operate. I thought it was super, super smart. There's some smart people out there doing some great things with these uh, uh, commercial-grade cameras, so that was pretty darn cool. So overall, the, the Canavision, I think it did pretty well. I think that C70 is a little, something a little uh, to get excited about. Uh, obviously not for your basic guys like me. With the, I'm not going to jump from the M50 up to a C70. I can pretty much guarantee you that at six grand. <laughs> But uh, I think it's pretty interesting to see where they're going. They're basically taking a cinema camera that come from here to the C300 this year, went to about this big, and now it's only this big. And the C50 is probably going to be around about here. So that's pretty darn cool for a cinema-grade image, a small compact form that was probably, this is something probably unheard of two, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, just just in saying where, how fast and how quickly it changes. So very, very cool. Now over on the phones, yet again another phone. Uh, crazy stuff, these phones this year, uh, just insane. This is a little bit of a fun one, the Royal Flex Pi 2. So that's that big folding unit, probably about the same size as me, me notepad. <laughs> um, and it's, it's the one that uh, Pablo Escobar, the Pablo Escobar version, I think that was the first version, was a flex pie. So a big folding screen where the screen's on the outside when it folds. Um, they've released a new version of that, the flex pie 2. It's coming out on the September the 25th. It's going to have up to 12 gigabyte of RAM, so a heap of grunt, uh, 512 gig of storage. It's going to be pretty expensive at 1710 US bucks. So that's pretty nasty. So that's going to be around the three grand mark Australian. 5G, it's going to have the Snapdragon 865. So it's, it is top of the line, all the fruit, all the bells and whistles, uh, and OLED screens. So like, definitely take the old FlexPly, pump it full of steroids, give it a kick out of the butt, and put a Ferrari engine in it, basically. So yeah, very, very cool. Uh, 4,450 battery. 64 megapixel, 1.8 aperture camera, so that's going to be good for low light. 16 megapixel, ultra wide at f2.2, again, still good at uh, light, so you'll be able to get some really good photos and some good sunsets and stuff with this thing. And a 32 megapixel, 2.0 portrait mode, so it'll give you a little bit of bokeh, 
out the back, uh, get a really nice image, so very, very cool. Um, and now also with that, it's got that dual screen photo, so you can see yourself while you're taking the photo. So obviously you get the camera on the outside, you can go to take a photo, and it uses the camera to show you a picture of your face. So you can line it up and get a good selfie, I guess. So that's pretty cool. That's a, something different you don't see on other phones. Even say like your Samsung Fold, it doesn't do that. Um, so it's a little bit of a niche, niche little trick, but a very cool trick and it might be not. Now it is, as I said, it's, it's pretty, it's a thick boy. It's a, it's a big sort of uh, form for it. And I think that's where it's sort of probably fallen over. It's not something you whack in your pocket or your top pocket and go. It's sort of something you've got to carry and treat it like a, a notepad and work with it that way. So a little bit different in that regards. And cost very exy so definitely up echelon if you're looking for that well it's going to be a niche product niche niche product <laughs> and then last but not least john prosser pretty switched on dude in regards to info with apple uh he's saying the iphone 12 event pretty close to he's got some good good feedback that it's going to be october 13th the date for the event the pre-order will be on the 16th and then they'll be in stores, at least in America. Uh, Australia will probably be a different thing. Uh, at least be in stores on the 23rd. So pre-order, which we should be worldwide. Um, so for Australia, look, you're looking at October the 16th for your pre-order. October 13th, you'll be able to find out what they are. But uh, looks like we've only got, let's say, two weeks until the Apple event. And we can see what iPhone 12 is and my new phone is going to be because I need a new phone. It's been three years, four years since the iPhone 10. So yeah, she's definitely due. And then anyway, that's it. So I think that was a good one to finish on. We finally got a bit of a bit of a date. Uh, he's pretty accurate with his uh, predictions. He's got a lot of things right this year. He's pretty renowned again. That he's got some good contacts. So I'd say that's fairly well. You could probably etch that one into as uh, pretty much close to the mark. So not far away for you Apple fans. It uh, won't be too much longer. Rightio, have a fantastic weekend. I will see you all again Monday if you're over from the podcast and you're listening. Well, you stay safe. If you're riding your push bike, don't crash while you're listening to me and watch out for that polar bear. <laughs> I will see you all again Monday. Thanks for stopping by. And whether you go on that way, that way, I'll catch you on Monday. Peace.